Hi, I'm Andy, and welcome to the sixth and final episode of JavaScript WTFs, uh, Surprising Things About JavaScript. Uh, this episode is about arrays. Uh, they're probably the thing that's caused me the most pain. Uh, they now make perfect sense to me, so um, uh, hopefully I can, uh, I can begin to explain to you um, uh, sufficiently that you won't be too surprised when you're using them and you won't spend hours fighting them. Uh, before we start, uh, I just want to say, read the Crockford book, uh, it's great, and uh, what I'm saying is largely what he says, but he says it better. Okay, so um, let's look at a very simple scenario. This is one of the surprising things about arrays. So here we've got, um, it's all on one line just to make it fit, but uh, we've got a bit of code that does something with an array. So the array in there is the square bracket 21, 22, 23. Uh, that's the way you make an array in JavaScript. And we are running a for loop. And JavaScript has this rather nice syntax, uh, which uh, is familiar to me from uh, Python. Uh, it's similar. I'm pretty sure they're similar in Ruby and, and loads of other languages, but uh, it's really nice. Um, is you've almost got an equivalent in Java now. Java's almost caught up. Um, anyway, it's a for loop, um, and in that loop we're using this variable i. Uh, bear in mind, as soon as you run this code, i will be visible in the entire scope of the function. If you didn't, uh, if you didn't watch video, I think number four uh, about scope, then you won't know about that, and you really need to. Anyway, uh, i is going to be going through this array, and uh, every step in the loop, we're going to write out the value of i. Okay, so. Surely we all know what this fun what this code is going to print, right? Wrong. Uh, what you're getting, you thought you were going to get 21, 22, 23, didn't you? At least I did. Um, what you get is the indexes in the array. You get 0, 1, 2. So what on earth? I mean... Why, why would you do this? Uh, anyway, imagine you've got the array in a variable. Once you're inside the loop, you can then get out the, the value at that index by using the array name and square bracket i. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, it makes this syntax almost useless for arrays. What, what were they thinking? Well, what they were thinking basically is that arrays are, arrays are, a, little, are a little hack on top of an object in JavaScript. It made implementing it originally quicker and, um, and speed of implementation was a key factor in the creation of JavaScript and then someone standardized it um, without fixing it first which uh, for which you should not blame the inventor of JavaScript um, yeah so did you get that? you get the indexes to the array when you use that syntax uh, one workaround for this is just don't use this syntax it, 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 it seems clearer to me to use a standard old style C like um, loop where you have a counter set to zero which um, you know which gets incremented by one each time around the loop. That's all that's happening here, it's just less clear here. So let's look at some more things about arrays. Imagine we've got um, a variable declared here called my error, uh, which is an array which contains 21, 22, 23. So Firebug uh, responds to that statement with undefined. So let's ask Firebug what is my error. Well, Firebug will respond with 21, 22, 23, which is not unreasonable. That's what you might expect, right? It's an array with these three values. So surely, because this is an array, this next line doesn't make sense. Why would you be able to set the foo property of an array? But Firebug responds as if my error was any other object, because actually, really, it basically is. It, um, objects are just arrays with a few superpowers. Um, so, we've set this property, foo, on an array. So, what's, what's in my error? Okay, well, Firebug tells us. 21, 22, 23. So, maybe what we did had no effect. Let's check. What's, uh, what's in foo? Three. What's going on here? 
So let's take a look at what happened. Um, I'll try and explain it. So um, the real WTF here is that Firebug is lying uh, on the second last line. When you ask Firebug what what's in my arrow, what's actually in my arrow is 21, 22, 23, and the property foo with the value 3. But more than that, what's in my arrow is the property 0 with the value 21, the property 1 with the value 22, and the property 2 with the value 23, and the property foo with the value 3. And uh, this is what I mean. Uh, arrays are just objects with a couple of special powers. Um, and maybe the, uh, the for loop is starting to make a bit more sense to you now. When you do a for loop for an array, it gives you the property names, just like it does when you do a for loop through the properties of an object. Um, it just happens that the property names are 0, 1, and 2. Um, so an array is an object with properties that tend to be numeric, but it can also have other properties. And it has this special magic thing called a length. Um, and when you change the length, it adds some extra properties for you. Let's have a look at that. So, um, this is the same variable we had in the previous slide, um, my hour. Um, so it had three things in it. Previously, its length was three. I didn't, uh, I didn't show you that, but it was. So let's set the length to five. So the answer you get back is five. Now, what's in my arrow? Well, what do you think? Well, what's in my arrow is five things. 21, 22, 23, undefined and undefined. And the properties of my arrow are, are named 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and still foo, because foo's still there. So, um, length of property, right? So, can we set it? No. Okay, so finally... Um, a bit of type checking, a bit of sanity in JavaScript. Um, length is this magic special property. As a, you can make any other property on an array, um, but if you try and make length something which doesn't make sense because it's a string and it has to be a number, um, JavaScript won't let you. So that's good. That's not a WTF. All right. So let's have a look at this. Let's look at this specially handcrafted array. Um, we're going to call it R, and it's got the numbers 3, 2, 1, 33, 22, and 11 in it. Okay, so Firebug responds under 5. What's in R? Well, what's in R is 3, 2, 1, 33, 22, and 11, like we put in there. It basically, yeah. So, uh, what happens when we sort this array? So, uh, the sort function sorts in place. Um, uh, it doesn't return the sorted version of the array, it sorts it um, in place, which is uh, sometimes needed for efficiency, so it's a reasonable choice. Um, yeah, functional people won't like it. What do you get back? You get back an array containing 1, 11, 2, 22, 3, 33. Why do you get that? You've told it you told JavaScript to sort this array. What's it done? Well, uh, if you've been around a while, you'll, it'll immediately occur to you that what's happened is you've been, um, you've got back um, a lexical sort of the string forms of these numbers. Um, okay, so maybe this can be explained because arrays um, only ever contain strings, right? Maybe that's it. So what's the type of the first thing in this array? Well, the type is number. Um, this, this thing is a number. That number one there, it is a number. And just in case you, you were getting worried about the foundations of mathematics and computer science, is 11 less than 2? No. I don't know whether that's good or bad in this stage. So here's the explanation. For, for a reason I cannot fathom, the sort function on an array always converts its arguments, or rather converts the, argument, the, the elements of the array to string before it compares them. So fortunately, you can pass in a function to sort, which is the comparison function. So if you want to live in a sane world, 
you can pass in a function which compares integers if that's what they are and tells you yes 2 is smaller than 11 but if you use the default sort on an array it treats everything as strings. It doesn't convert anything to strings just for the, com the, uh, for the purposes of comparing them it treats them as strings. Do not ask me why. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and that completes our series on WTFs by the Crockford book.